Hello, friends. My name is Dave Miller. And I'm Nas Spain. And we're your fuck buddies. We are a dating and sex advice podcast where we take your sticky, sexy situations and we turn them into sexy, sticky situations. Simply put, we scour the internet and we receive wonderful questions from our listeners on the topics of sex and dating. We answer them for you. Now, do you have anything pressing? Because I'm kind of horny to just do a bunch of questions today. You know what? I was feeling the exact same way. Hell yeah, let's do it. I'm going to go first, though. Okay. This is by I Hate Life 101. Disgusted. I've been talking to a guy. We met online. And it got to the point where I felt like I wasn't really into him anymore. I let him know this. And he said, okay, I suggested maybe we could just be friends. The next day, he sent me a video message. In the message, he had a mattress. And he was sliding his fingers in and out of it in a very suggestive fashion. And said, this is what I want to be doing with you. What do I do? This man cut a hole in his mattress? I assume he bunched it up, you know, like he grabbed it and like folded it over to form a slit, perhaps. Okay, but unless this is a shitty futon, that's still an impressive feat of... Like, mattresses don't just fold. Oh, you know what? I was thinking duvet. No, mattresses are like the... Now, I will say, I am paraphrasing because the text was deleted from earlier. So I'm pretty sure it's duvet. Let's retcon this whole thing. It's a duvet. Man, the mattress would be powerful. That's what I'm saying. I was like, is this man just folding a mattress in half to finger it? Because that he's just that's a flex right there. He's like, I have Hulk strength. Sorry, it's a duvet. OK, I mean, regardless, it it's still gross. And it's a weird move. It, it would be a weird move if you guys were like having sex. Like if you guys were in a fuck buddy or a sexual relationship to have someone fake finger, you know, bedding. Yeah. Even then, like, the only time that works is if it's a joke. If you have the kind of relationship where, like, you're messing with each other and, like, you're being sexy by doing things that aren't sexy, you know? But you really need to know that you're doing that. Or you're young and, like, everything is horny. You know what I mean? Like, there's that age of, like, you know, just getting into college or whatever and, like, everything can be sexy uh, (laughs) because you've just started fucking and, like, oh, he's fake fingering it. It's I want that. Yeah. And, you know. (laughs) Who, who knows? Maybe that is someone's, you know, maybe he dated someone and that was something that really got them going. And he thinks this is what everyone wants to see. Regardless, it doesn't matter. This woman has said, hey, I am not into you. Let's just be friends. That doesn't mean to crank up the sexual advances. Yeah, that's the complete opposite of what you should be doing. And clearly this guy just isn't getting the message. Um, so fuck the friends thing, because clearly he's not on board. I say block him and move on. Yeah, that, it's I, a weird move and he's not listening to what you want. And neither of those things are great. If it was like a really like a, a power, like maybe you made one last like big hurrah and it was, you know, it worked. But if you're grossed out by this, you don't like him. There's no harm in being like, cool, this isn't going to work. Uh, bye. And yeah, block and move on. Just be like, obviously, you don't get it. Uh, bye. And then just just block. This is a question off of Instagram. It is a repeat question asker. You might have oh, remembered yeah. Pino Boy Toy. Oh, yes. Yeah. He's back. Model, model exploits um, prior to. He does uh, He does have a little update just saying that he, looking back, he does think that maybe he went overboard with the jealousy and that could have caused some issues. So it's good that you've you've clocked that for yourself. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's, it's always good to, to not just assume that you're the one who's always doing the right thing. To look back and be able to critically observe and analyze your past relationships and see where you might have made mistakes is crucial in, in growing as a person. So good job for you. Yeah, it's it's hard to do too, so. Especially with things like jealousy. It is very easy to like mask how jealousy works and mm-hmm. being able to clock that for yourself is is so so important. So good job. However, he's got another dilemma. I have another question though, and this is about a previous model that I was seeing prior to the bad swimming model. I was going to make a joke about it has to be another model, and I'm glad that it is. Uh, She also had a boyfriend before, and I was one of the reasons why they broke up, because the guy found out she met up with me on Valentine's Day last 2020 when she said she was about to get some sleep. That's a bad move, meeting up with cheating on someone on Valentine's Day? Right. God damn. So we went out for a couple months, but I said to end it because she would always tell me the morning after we had sex that I took advantage of her, and she did not want to have sex. This happened on multiple occasions, and I would always ask her if this is what she wants before we did the deed, and she would not respond, but instead kiss me torridly. What the fuck? So the last time we did it, I intentionally booked a room with two separate beds and did an experiment. She took a bath first, told me afterwards that nothing was going to happen between us. I told her that's cool, proceeded to take a shower. After the shower, I went out with the towel covering my dick and purposely dropped it, making it look as if it was an accident. 
She took notice and laughed, but I proceeded to my bed and told her that you ain't going to taste this tonight. After an hour, though, she asked me to sleep beside her and hug her because she was cold. I obliged and warned her, though, that no sex was going to happen. As soon as I got in bed with her and cuddled with her, she began stroking my cock and I got horny. I proceeded to kiss her on the ears and neck and she continued to moan, so I shoved my dick inside her and fucked her to kingdom come. Uh, the next day, she told me I took advantage of her again and she was very upset. I told her I thought she wanted it, but she was having none of it, so I took her home. After that incident... I decided to end the relationship for fear of being accused of rape if I continue the relationship. Now, after four months of no contact, she suddenly messaged me and says, what's up? What's your advice? I feel like I should keep my distance and avoid trouble. P.S. She was the one who invited me to the bad swimmer model, or she was the one who invited the bad swimmer model to the party I threw last year with mucho gusto and undying libido, Pino boy toy. Hell yeah, that's a great sign off. This person's bad news. That's a real weird thing to say. Although, like we said before, communication, like you should have talked after that and been like okay well i definitely never want to do that to you so like we need to lay our cards out on the table and like straight up be like hey do you want to have sex or not you know what i mean like in general and like maybe the next time you had sex um because i can't imagine like any situation where this should ever happen more than like once yeah it, you should have put your foot down instead of doing this like power play experiment situation which if I if I were to suggest going forward, don't do this. <laughs> this isn't this isn't a good way to handle the problems. You should have been like, you know, asked her, do you want to have sex? And if she doesn't answer you, be like, I need a yes. Mm -hmm. you know? Because last time we had sex, you said I took advantage of you and I don't ever want to do that, you yeah. know, and, and be genuine about it because it sounds like you don't want to do that. So it's be like, until you say yes, I'm not going to have sex with you mm -hmm. because I don't want to take advantage of you. And I want to make sure we're on the same page about this. Yeah, because there are there are such things as like tacit consent and all these things. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, if you're in a relationship, odds are every time you don't need to be like, hey, just so you know, work, is it okay if we have, you know, you're in a, the swing of it, you understand each other. But when someone gives you tacit consent and then the, the day after tells you that that wasn't what it was, you have to be really careful in the next time because like either they're lying to you for some reason, which sucks, or legitimately that's what they meant. And in which case you definitely don't want to repeat it. I think I told this story before, but I went on a Tinder date with a girl once um, and we went back to mine and like things are going really well. And we were like, you know, making out and like taking clothes off. And at one point she was like, you know, I, I forget the exact word. And she was like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. And I was like, oh, okay, shit. Like, sorry. Um, so I dialed it back and like, you know, we we're, we we're talking for a bit. And again, it's the first date. She said she didn't want to do anything. I imagine she's probably feeling uncomfortable. So I was expecting for her to like leave. And at one point I was like, oh, do you want to head? And she's like, no, I might just stay here. So I'm like, okay. And then we get into bed and same kind of deal. It's like she takes off all her clothes, but her underwear. But again, maybe she just wants to sleep in that. That's fine. And then she like grinds up on me, like when we're like in bed and, you know, hands start to wander. And I was like, okay, d did you change your mind or you know, what's happening here? She's like, no, I, I don't want to. And I was like, oh, okay, sure. And then she got like really weird. And eventually I was like, look, I don't understand what's going on here. And she was like, look, where I come from, you're not meant to say you want to have sex. So like, I can't say that you're just meant to like have sex with me. And I was like, well, I'm never going to do that. Like I, you, that's not where I come from. And that is literally a crime. I was like, I, if you want to play a game like that, that's fine. But we need to literally talk about that because right now I'm not going to have a, I'm not, not going to have sex with you unless you say you want to have sex. And it actually got pretty hot because she was like really reluctant to say it, which was weird. But like, obviously she wanted to. And then I, she was like really embarrassed to say it. Anyway, it was fun. But there was a whole thing where like I was just like flat out refused to because that's not cool. Yeah. And the, it's like that needs to be. And then like, look, man, I get it. In the heat of the moment when you're horny and you've got a beautiful woman in front of you and all you want to do is fuck and you like get the strong sense that also she wants to fuck. Mm -hmm. It's it's very easy to sort of, you know, be made of a little bit of jelly and, and you know, kind of be like, well, this is OK. But I go and I don't think it's it's not even like, ooh, you know, the climate today, you have to be super careful. It, the fuck that bullshit. That doesn't mean anything. What we need to do as men put our foot down and be like, if there's no consent, I'm not going to sleep with you mm -hmm. for two reasons. One, yeah, to protect yourself, for sure. If, if she's going to constantly accuse you of taking advantage of her, that's bad news for you, because if it comes down to what he said, she said it, no one wins. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like your name is going to get fucked up, blah, blah, blah. And I, again, I don't want to like get into the, those kind of semantics because it, it's a tricky conversation to have 
when we're not really talking about that. Mm -hmm. And two, we need to undo this culture of sex being taboo and women not being able to ask for sex. And like, there's so much socialization about that where consent gets muddied from women's side of things because for years we've told them that they can't want sex. Yeah. If you're promiscuous, you're a slut or whatever, which just means then it's hard for people to give consent in certain times, like because they feel like they can't or that they shouldn't, even if they want to, which then leads to people either genuinely thinking they had consent when they didn't or using that as an excuse, which exactly. neither is good. So the reason I bring that up is because we desperately need to, and I think the onus is, is pretty strongly on men to uh, remove the gray area of consent and not wonder and not be like, oh, she's playing a game or, and like, there's, there's a bit of onus on women to, if you want to have sex, say you want to have sex. And if you don't want to have sex, don't have sex, but we need to remove the, the, this like weird thing and i don't know how much it's still happening but it happened all the fucking time we've talked about it a bunch of times where women have told me that they don't want to have sex and then the next day chastise me or refuse to go Mm -hmm. out with me again because i didn't have sex with them yeah that's happened to me as well it's happened to a lot of people i know it's i think it's happened to probably any any male or man who's who's dating women regularly it's probably happened to them um and that situation is so fucked Because as we've talked about, again, this socializes men to assume that women saying they don't want to have sex is a test as opposed to consent. Yeah. And that is so dangerous for everyone involved. Everyone in the whole spectrum of genders and and dating. It's such a fucking mess. So we need to. And I think, again, this is sort of men need to do this. Be like, I don't feel like I have consent here. So I'm going to take a step back. Mm hmm. And you can find sexier ways to say that, but I think you need to make it clear being like, hey, I'm not sure where you stand right now. And until I get a clear yes or no, I'm not going to proceed any further. We can make out for sure, but sex isn't going to happen if I'm not sure. And I think that needs to be like the gold standard going forward for all dudes. No, 100% agreed. You know, like if there's any ever any doubt or in this case where you've been explicitly told after the fact in this weird thing and like again i i can't see a situation where she means that in this situation like because you've seen each other multiple times and you know but again i'm not going to get into that because it's a whole messy thing and we don't have every example and all that regardless you need to be sure if there's ever a doubt like you can't play these games and be like oh you know she's done x y and z so that's pretty much a yes You just need to talk to her. And I would recommend like more specifically on this question, I would say probably not to meet up with her because that seems like a lot more trouble than sex is worth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I also don't necessarily know why she would do that. Again, it could be a similar situation to one I was talking about where it's like uh, she just doesn't feel like she should be like allowed. Yeah, Yeah, it's unbecoming. And like it's more of like a self-preservation-y like cultural thing. If that's the case, and you'll know better than us, maybe give it another shot, but never go further than, you know, a, a, n- never go far without a yes, is what I'm saying. If, if you do want to give it a second chance, you need to make sure that cards are on the table and like everybody's direct and clear and knows where they stand. So yeah, that's there's, there's my two options. Either fuck it, obviously you've no problem finding models. There are plenty more fish in the sea and it's better for everyone involved if you know where you stand and you don't have to worry about, you know, the legality and all that. You know, those games aren't fun. But if for whatever reason you do want to, you just need to make sure with both of you that that you're where you're at and where you want to be. And that consent is there. I would say there's no, I would not see this person again. I would say this person has repeatedly accused you of taking advantage of them. Despite the fact that that doesn't seem to be the case. Mm -hmm. That to me is one of the biggest red flags that I have absolutely no interest in ever having in my life. If someone, if someone, if that happened the first time, I would apologize profusely. I would try to understand the situation. I would try to understand what I did wrong and where the communication breakdown was. And I would be like, Hey, I never wanted to do that. And I'm very sorry. Thank you for letting me know. It will never happen again. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. The only reason why I'm giving the second option is just because of that experience I had with this person where like, I understood where they were coming from after they talked to me about it. But like, what they wanted me to do was to just have sex with them without consent effectively. You know what I mean? Which is so fucked up from my perspective, but from theirs wasn't. So it's like, I kind of understand a little bit more in in some situations 
that people feel like they need to do that. I don't know if that's this situation. I feel like question asker will know more. Sexual like promiscuity, like culturally, varies from country to country. So I'm I imagine that's what it is. But I could be wrong. Because for me, like it would a hundred percent if I didn't have that understanding, be one of those things where I'd be like, fuck this, I'm out. But the, th- the 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 difference between your situation and his situation is she wanted you to have sex with her. So if you had had sex with her, I don't think she would have then turned around and accused you of taking advantage of her. Yeah, probably not. See what I'm saying? It's like mm-hmm. I think like the it's it's not the but like until I, I until I told her to like not be playing that role, which again was like it was a long conversation and it was like the whole thing. I think she would have continued to play that role. So I think like maybe it wouldn't have been like, oh, you took advantage of me. I think next time we met up, which we did, she would have been like saying no again, if yeah. that makes sense. And that's kind of how she explained it to me is that like you, she was expected to. It was just a thing she kind of like brought on and thought that that was how she was meant to act. I, I would still say like me personally, I, what Niall saying is absolutely correct. Yes. If you want to keep seeing this person, have that talk. And then set the lines of being like, if I don't get a yes, we're not having sex. And you've got to have the willpower to, to follow through with that. Yes. If, if you don't think that you can, you can hold yourself to that standard, do not see this person again. And yeah. I think that's, that's where the line has to be drawn. It's like, if you really don't think you have the willpower to not have sex with this person without the yes, don't see her again. Mm-hmm. And honestly, you probably just shouldn't, but you know. The options are on the table for you. And thank you for, for writing back and writing in, letting us know what's what's up. Uh, this is by Strange Designer 8214 What to do with a girl who I had sex with in our first two dates, but then she says she doesn't want to do it again until we're in an official relationship. I met a girl a week ago, and after the first two dates and having sex, she said she wanted to slow things down. Went out two times after it, and when I tried to do eye contact with her, she just says, stop looking at me like that, because I feel nervous when you do that, and I can't talk. Also, she avoids physical contact with me, even touching hands, and she doesn't flirt with me at all. When I flirt with her, she just makes a small laugh or says, don't make me shy. At the same time, she asks me to give her a shirt with my perfume on it. We barely text sometimes. She replies fast and sometimes not. One time I asked her, do you like me? She said, maybe. Yesterday, I wanted to call her, but she said she is not in the mood and she wanted to watch her series. I'm confused. I don't know how to deal with her because it's my first time to be in this position. I know it's really early and it's only been a week, but I want to know if she's friend zoning me or not. I feel that I like her so much, I just want to spend more time with her and get to know her much more. What should I do? Should I give her space and don't talk to her until she does? How did this question simultaneously sound like it was written by like a 17-year-old and also like a 60-year-old? I don't know. It was a trip to read, though. Is this is it two women? Sorry, because they said perfume. Uh, I'm assuming it's a non-English speaker. Right, and they meant cologne. Okay, I was—I just wasn't sure if it was if it was two hey, ladies. I could be entirely wrong. It doesn't tell uh, me, so maybe that's just me being all heteronormative. If it was two women, it could be someone who isn't quite comfortable out in public yet, mm-hmm. which is what I was maybe thinking. Like, and that's a, a an avenue you can kind of explore of being like, you know, when she's happy to go on dates with you, but the second there's sort of like any physical contact, she's worried about the public eye seeing her out. Hmm. That's fair. Um, but if, if it's just, if it's, you know, a, a heterosexual couple, um, this sounds like, uh, the first thing again, with the, the not wanting to like make eye contact or, or any PDA makes me think that maybe she's seeing someone Mm -hmm. and doesn't want to be caught double dipping. That's possible. Uh, those, so those are my, like the first gut reactions to this question alternatively you guys might just be super young does it say ages it doesn't say ages or genders okay so i assume these people are very young yeah i'm assuming and even from the like it's my first time doing this so either they're young both in relationship experience and life age life age that's a great way to put that or uh they're young in in just the dating experience which is pretty much the same thing right i'm assuming so again just by how it's worded but uh unfortunately no no details uh, like i think the devils are in the details in this one because uh, like it's hard to sort of dissect what it could be without any any kind of laser focus a mm-hmm. little bit um but okay let's sort of break it down into its parts I think you need to, as with every question we answer, almost always, you have to sit down and be like, hey, so I really like you, Mm -hmm. but I feel like we're kind of not on the same wavelength right now. And I just want to check in and see if you are still feeling this. If if you're not, just let me know and we'll move on. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, that's 100% it. And it's like, this person seemed to have tried at least a little bit because they said, do you like me? And she said, maybe. <laughs> Which is uh, it's a real shit answer. So I don't know. Maybe this person is very inexperienced and nervous because I don't know why you would get so nervous after having sex two times. You know what I mean? Even once, I could understand it more, but two times and then to to kind of start cutting off like this. I wonder if it is, I don't know. I would assume it's some kind of weird nerves thing because I would assume it's them leaving, like backing out and like being less attracted to you if it wasn't for the give me your shirt with like your smell on the thing because that's yeah. a very weird thing to do if you're trying to create distance um but you you gotta talk and not even just a like hey do you like me maybe like leave it at that you gotta just be like hey so like we had some fun physically and you don't seem to want it anymore you know you, you want to kiss you and eye contact you're being you're being strange and like i just feel like you're withdrawing a bit and just literally try and get an answer off her and if if like she refuses to answer you then it doesn't really matter if she likes you or not because you don't want to date a person that is that useless with with relationships. You don't want to be in the dark trying to fucking get answers on the internet from people that don't know the details, right? You really need to, much like the other question, you need specifics and hard lines and, and facts. You don't need feelings and guesses and pain. Don't just give her space and not talk to her until she approaches you because that way lies madness. So you got to lay it, lay it down, talk to her and just be like, know what you want. You know what I mean? If you want to just keep continuing the relationship casually or if you want a relationship or whatever, because if she's like, hey, well, what are you looking for? And you can't answer that. That question is not going to go anywhere. Figure out what you want and then talk to them and be ready to say you are talking to me less. You're texting me less. You're physically withdrawn, etc. And see what she says. And if it's not a comforting answer or it's not a clear answer, I would just give up on this because no one needs that stress in their life. A part of me wonders if... She got the bullshit advice from her friends being like, if he doesn't buy the cow, he shouldn't get the milk mm -hmm. kind of bullshit of being like, oh, sure, you've had sex with him twice. That's a little taste. But like, if he's not going to lock you down or be exclusive with you, then he doesn't get sex anymore. The female dating strategy fucking subreddit. I wonder if she just saw that and was like, oh, shit, I was here being nice and genuine. Yeah, because it, like that kind of switch. And then like, oh, I don't want to talk to you because I'm going to watch my TV show. All these all seem like lady negging. Yeah, it's yeah. like the female version of seduction. Yeah, which makes me wonder, like it, a part of me probably wonders if perhaps she got some of that bad, that street advice, you know, cut with baking oh, soda. Like the non F-Buds uh, like standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where last I checked, we were still triple star platinum rated, right? It, uh, yeah, it wasn't certified by the FBA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Fuck Buddies Alliance. Yeah, like, I don't know if she did the 17-year course, the people that gave uh, this advice that we did um, at Harvard. That classic 17-year Harvard course. Yeah, well, you know, time is money and money is sex. I don't know what that even means. Um, yeah, I I would imagine she's either, I don't know, it's like cheating on you, doesn't like you, but doesn't know how to say it, just super inexperienced and shy and having a breakdown, or has received terrible advice either way you need to talk to her and if she doesn't have a clue just get out of there because you're yeah, just wasting your life as we've said a, a million times communication is the foundation of a great re relationship and the worst answer you could ever get from anyone is maybe yeah that's bullshit maybe she's trying to be coy or funny or sexy it's not cool it's not well, good here's the thing it Depending, like, there are ways to say maybe and say yes. You know what I mean? Whether this was the thing and he just didn't pick up on it, or if she is just trying to be aloof for aloof reasons, then, yeah, that fucking sucks. Either way, you got to sit her down. You got to talk to her. And if you can't, if, if, if it's still more sort of vague bullshit, then be like, cool, I'm not going to invest my time. Like, there's no way I want to get in a relationship with you if you can't have this simple converse, like conversation. Mm -hmm. If you can't handle this then there's no way I want to be in a committed relationship with you. Sorry. Yep. And then fucking moonwalk out of there. This comes from Reddit user Best Assistant 238 Is consent implied in marriage? I woke up to my wife sucking my dick this morning. I have never seen that side of her before, and it was awesome. Now, if I were in attempt to wake her up by placing my dick on her lips, would that be weird and non-consensual? No judgment, please. I just want to know. Um, It is always safer to garner consent. And in this situation, you can do it by being playful uh, and sexy. And because you have you have this thing that happened 
So you can just be like, hey, when you did that the other day, that was super hot. And then maybe just be like, you know, maybe one day I'll wake you up with my dick on your lips or, you know, going down on you or whatever and like see what she says to that. So it's it's funny you mentioned that because this guy, there, there are two things. One, no, uh, consent is never implied in marriage. You no, can still- consent is never really implied in anything. Yes. Uh, wives, girlfriends, husbands. All boyfriends, they can all rescind consent at any point in time. You never just because you're in a relationship with someone does not mean that you have consent with that person. Yeah. If someone and and again, we'll we'll say this one more time. This is the episode of repetition. Re- consent can be rescinded at any point in time as well. So you could have consent from your wife, and while you're having sex, she might say, "Hey, I don't want to do this anymore." That's that's her right. Yeah. And you have to respect that. I know a lot of you know that. A lot of fucking people out there don't, which is why this podcast exists. I I will say this. I will repeat it so that you can repeat it and we can all live in a happy, consent, sexy world. Mm -hmm. Um, That being said, you are implying that the reciprocated act would be to... uh, of her waking you up with a blowjob is to wake her up by making her give you a blowjob. Yeah. That was the bit that kind of threw me because it's like that, that's the complete opposite. It's like, Oh, she did this thing for me. So now I'm going to go and do this thing for me. Yes. Yeah. If you want to repay the favor, if you thought that was hot, then you need to repay the favor by performing oral sex on her, not sort of waking her up in order to perform oral sex on you. Yes. Now that's not to say she wouldn't, be into that but i think if you want to open these doors you should you know reciprocate in kind yeah it's funny because like my advice was what i was thinking of when you were telling me this like the question because i assumed that was what he was gonna go to and like hey if she's into bloat being woken up with a dick on her lips that's fine like some people are yeah um but i would definitely have gone with what you were saying and assumed that he was going the other way and that would be a cooler way uh, regardless, there is no like technically she didn't have consent for what she did to you unless you guys had talked about it before, which it doesn't seem like it it has. So like you can easily solve this problem by bringing it up and talking about it. And like it's still sexy because, you know, you can talk about what happened and like say how much you liked it and then be like, oh, would you ever, you know, you you can get into this in a very natural way sexy way it's so easy that you don't have to guess you don't have to wonder about consent because you can talk to her about it and it's like you're not going to ruin anything because she's still going to be asleep if she agrees to it you know what i mean it's still going to be that that pleasant surprise yeah i mean there's no harm like it's not like this was a situation where you didn't like something and Mm -hmm. you don't know how to bring it up if you like something there is no harm in like a week, two weeks, whatever later, coming up behind your partner and being like, hey, so I know this happened a while ago, but like I think about this all the time and how fucking awesome it was. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. You know what I mean? I think like that is the greatest compliment to have someone tell you that they still think about something you did like on a whim. That's one. It's a great thing to compliment your partner on Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Two, you could then be just ask this very simple question of being like, would you be interested in me returning the favor sometime there in the same go. way. And right there, she could be like, and don't be offended. If she's like, no, you know, I don't feel the freshest in the morning. Cool. You know, yeah. and then you can proceed to ask me like, well, would you be interested in like me waking you up with my dick, you know, on your lips? Mm-hmm. You're, you're then opening up the door to the conversation and your sex life is only going to get better. The more you do this. Yeah. There's literally no downside. Whereas like, guess what? If you wake her up with a dick in her mouth, and like she's tired or she can't get back to sleep or she has work the next day or anything like that could fucking suck, man. Like yeah. this is going to be the opposite of sexy. Like even if you wake her up by going down on her, I think she'd be, you know, there, there's a whole different thing there. I think either way, safest, sexiest, best option is to talk about it beforehand. One is you giving and not liking somebody giving something is a lot better I think than not liking somebody taking something. This is the thing. It's like a blowjob is an obligation. You know what I mean? Like yeah. going down, no one's like, Oh, I have to get eaten out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, great. She just lies there and gets fucking pleasured. But to wake her up with your dick is to be like, you now have to put an effort. Yeah. <laughs> wake up and like do, do stuff for me. You know, that that's not, that's not the same ballpark, dude. Um, and also like, it's very possible that she will, you know, not feel sexy, in the midst of sleep, you know what I mean? Like maybe she wants to freshen up 
or anything like that. So definitely be prepared for a conversation. But on the upside, when you have this conversation and you tell her how much you liked it, that's going to increase the likelihood of it happening again for you. Exactly. So yep. like it's it's win, win, win. Just talk about it. And I'm there just, is, on what Dane said earlier, I'm just going to repeat it. There is no com- implied consent because you're married or dating or, you know, anything like that. I always tell people, like, there are times where I'll, like, be telling a story about my sexual exploits. And people are like, oh, you're so lucky. Or blah, blah, blah. I was like, it has nothing to do with luck. I mean, maybe, you know, luck always has a role in things. But, like, I was like, the number one way to achieve your fantasies sexually is to tell people about your fantasies sexually in Mm -hmm. the right environment, of course. But, like, if you never mention that you want to do whatever, like, if you never tell your partner to be like, hey, I'm really into spanking and I would love to spank you. Mm -hmm. Then you're just relying on them, hopefully just either one, figuring it out or two, guessing or three act like exactly like you know it, it's there's there's nothing worse than like wanting to do something and not sure if you should mm-hmm. if if you bring it up to your partner and you're like hey i would love to spank you and they're like oh, i'm not really into that well then you know you know what mm-hmm. i mean there's no more and it might be a little bit of a bummer because it's like a fantasy of yours even if it's a bummer it's better than like having it in the back of your mind every time you're fucking because that's gonna yeah. take you out of the pleasure and on top of that, it's like, or you doing it and then being upset in the moment and ruining the sex and then mm-hmm. you've got like this this black mark on your sex life, even if it's a small one, it's it's still like that one time that like things didn't really go down well. And maybe that's in the back of your head now. You had a conversation, it's done with. You know you can move on. And also they yeah. know you want to do it. So maybe if they change their mind, they can approach you. You know what I mean? Like it's healthy. And it facilitates a, a sexual relationship in which the partners communicate with each other. Because mm-hmm. who knows? Maybe that will give her the courage to express something that she's always wanted to do, which might be something you've always also wanted to do. So it's like the importance of communication in a sexual relationship, whether you're dating or not, it doesn't matter if you're having sex with someone, the more you talk about it and the more you talk about the things that you want and like, and don't like the better the sex is going to be. And the more, the the greater the chances of a fulfilling sexual relationship, but also the greater the chances of the things that you've always wanted to do being done. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to one compliment your partner. If they do something that fucking blows your mind and you know, you were so out of it that you didn't think to mention it. It's not too late. No, you know what I mean? All. By all means, talk to them at any point in time. Be like, hey, I think about whatever. You know, I think about that morning blowjob all the time. Mm-hmm. And I fucking loved it. And, you know, give her a kiss on the head and be like, thank you for being incredible. Yeah. And no one's going to take that poorly. And if they do, th- I think there's a problem somewhere down the yeah. line. <laughs> But, you know, if you're in a healthy relationship, no one's going to be upset with that. Um, So I do have an idea because, Dane, you're completely right. Talking to her is never going to work. So what you got to do is you get a piece of paper. You cut out a bunch of Zs, right? You arrange them in a pattern on the duvet you folded in half. And then you put some lipstick on it. And then you stick your dick in the duvet and you send it to her say this is what i want to do to you she'll get it 100 percent. it's very clear and it's not creepy or weird yeah and it's everyone finds simulated bed sex sexy mm-hmm. yeah how many ma- how many questions we want on the same topic <laughs> yeah i kind of get we kind of went on a theme here yeah uh this is by terminator 0214 okay guys and girls i need a bit of help I'm having success in online dating with getting matches, five to six a day on Tinder, two to three a day on Hinge, two to three on Bumble, and my conversations aren't terrible, decent replies, but I need some advice. How to keep it fresh and move it towards a date. I'm incredibly charismatic and charming in person, but I'm a phone call guy, rarely text, so how do I let the personality shine via text? And as an added bonus, the first piece of advice is if you're a phone call guy, just get them on the phone. Ask them for your number immediately and give her a call. That's the the highest voted piece of advice that they are apparently following. See, again, not FBA. Yep, not FBA at all. That's like zero star rating, not even platinum, probably wood. Not even good wood, driftwood. um, One, sorry you're a phone guy, but throw that out the fucking window. It's not going to happen. Yes, it's never going to work. Nobody wants to get a call, dude. Nobody. Here's the funny thing is one of the women that I dated who is actually very, still very dear to me and is still a really good friend and taught me so, so much about polyamory and jealousy and open dating. Uh, She refused to meet up with me until we had a phone call. And 
I was about to bail on that so hard and I'm so glad that I didn't because, you know, I, I adore her. Mm-hmm. Um, but but like, uh, even then that wasn't a off the bat, like, hey, let's have a phone call right now. Oh, God, no. And if even you, then it if sucked. Get, <laughs> if, here's the thing. I don't think my technique when I was on Tinder was to get off Tinder immediately. Mm-hmm. If I vibed with someone and we had a good rapport, I would always be like, let's swap numbers. You know what I mean? Or ask them on a date. Like, I don't. I don't, I didn't do the whole like back and forth. Let's chat for weeks Mm -hmm. because it's whatever you end up talking about all the shit you should be talking about on a date. And then when you get to the date, you got nothing left to say. Yeah. I was always Um, a pretty quick move to a date or, or fuck it. Because again, like if like you're kind of talking to a point where you, you get the fact that you're not a fucking weirdo or that you have something in common, right? That's really all you need to establish. Cause after that, as you said, you're just wasting what you're going to say and you're just fizzling out because if you don't know a person and you don't see them, you don't meet them. Like you're, you're not really going to go further. I would usually ask someone out on a date. If I, if I got the, like the vibe from them uh, within like 15 minutes talking to them on Tinder, if it was like a quick back. Wow, and okay. Forth, that's, you know what I mean? that's a lot quicker than I would have done it. Oh yeah, no, I, it was like one of those things and like, I wouldn't maybe like time and place, but I would say, you know, I would always try to like find a way to work and be like, let's grab drinks, Mm -hmm. you know, like just very blatantly because like, that's what they're there. What we're here for. You know what I mean? We're not here to fucking chat. Well, some people are, but I would, yeah, I would, I would try to get a phone number and get the idea of meeting out, meeting up very, very quickly. Yeah. For me, it would probably be like two or three days if we're like talking. You know what I mean? But again, it all depends. Like if you sit down and just have like an incredible conversation with someone, I would have no harm in being like, yeah, let's go out. I think my first Tinder date, and to be fair, she invited herself over towards mine. It was like in a few hours. I got very picky uh, with my Tinder dates towards the end. Mm -hmm. Um, Or like, you know, once the novelty of Tinder wore off, I was like, you know, I was either a yes or no, like right off the bat. Like if I got really boring one word answers from people, I would just be like, eh. Oh yeah, fuck that get out so it was like if someone really caught my attention i'd be like okay considering how many like matches and shit and like just the sheer amount of like volume that is out there if you sort of pique my interest quickly then i don't see why i wouldn't ask you out quickly you know what yeah, i mean yeah that's the thing you don't need much but like for me it's just like you need a, a rapport and like the idea that they're pretty cool you know but yeah. you really don't want it going on too long because the excitement starts to wear off and again you're kind of like wasting the chat you're gonna have and like the anyway you don't want it going too long but definitely don't give them a fucking phone call no. i will i will like bet you right now that nine out of ten people immediately will stop talking to you if you're like hey send me your number i'll give you a call and and i would say 10 out of 10 apart from i just don't want to deal in absolutes it's not inherently weird it is, but it is like social, like it's so fucking, like, I don't want to talk to anyone on the phone. No. I call my, the only people I, I talk regularly to on the phone are my parents. I talk to my old landlord on the phone. That's about yes. it. Um, it's just, no one wants to do it anymore. And because like when you're on the phone, you can't multitask. No. You're pretty much stuck wandering around your house and like maybe petting your cat. That's what I usually do when I'm mm-hmm. on the phone. No, no one wants to do that. No one wants to tie down, especially online dating, because this might hurt your feelings, but they're not just talking to you. No. The whole point of online dating is you're shuffling your cards around. You know what I mean? You're not putting all your eggs in one basket, which is why when someone caught my attention, I made a move mm-hmm. because like, especially with women, it's like five minutes, 10 minutes. They've got like seven other matches that they're talking to. Yeah, at least. <laughs> So it, it makes no sense. Also, yeah, just don't call them Yeah, for God's sakes. And you know what? You can definitely mention, be like, and if someone's like, hey, I'm into that, mm-hmm. but trying to get their number and just calling them. It's also like, because you're trapped. It's it's almost like the guy that pushes you into the corner in the bar and won't let you leave. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. texting. It's like you can bail at any moment. You can reply on whatever. Like you're not, you're not there where it's like with calls. It's like, hey. You're in this bathroom with me now and you can't get out. It's it's no bueno. No. Don't do it. Don't no, do 100%. It. That was weird. <laughs> what? No bueno. It's just you said it funny. Um, this comes from sex throwaway. P. Boyfriend wants me to stay completely emotionless during sex. We are both 18. We recently started having sex and he doesn't want me to move at all. He said it's a turnoff when girls feel too alive during sex and then he cannot oh. enjoy himself. Oh yeah, and that he cannot enjoy himself when they move around. Oh, One time no. he wanted to tie me up to the bed to restrict my movement, but I don't like ropes. 
During sex, he tells me to make my body as limp as possible. He even told me to pretend that you're dead. I told him it's pretty fucked up to ask me to do that. Mm -hmm. However, one time I agreed to do it, and it's the first time he had an orgasm. He shuddered and said we need to do it again. I don't want to have sex this way, and honestly, find it kind of creepy, or super creepy. He vehemently denies it's a fetish and said that people have different tastes. I told him that he can't just expect me to stay completely still every time we have sex. Uh, He said that his exes, two of them, happily fulfilled his request. Every time we talk about it, he gets all defensive, says that I'm acting like he's some creepy serial killer. He gets upset and accuses me of being judgmental. Should I be worried? Have you confirmed the existence of these two girlfriends on this mortal coil? Yeah. Is there a reason that they're ex-girlfriends? Have they also broken up with life as a result of him? I don't know how you can top, you know, pretend like you're dead. Yeah. Like that's, that's a weird thing to say, but somehow he manages to top it with saying, I don't like when girls feel too alive. Yeah. That's uh, also, let's be fair. No one is going, I'm not a serial killer unless they're a serial killer. You know how many times I've had to say I'm not a serial killer in my life? Never, never. I've never had to say that. I've never had to reassure someone that I'm not a serial killer because the things I'm doing are too serial killery. So I was walking down the highway uh, because we had to park to get to this national park, like just on the edge of the highway in the back arse of nowhere uh, down by Blue Mountain. And as we were walking down the road, there was this like giant like wooden house with all these like bird houses, like hundreds and hundreds of bird houses like stuck to the outside of it. And my girlfriend was like, oh, these are really cool. And while she was looking at them, a guy came out of the house. It's like creepy old dude with a beard and was like, oh, you want to see where I make them? And I was like, no. And she was like, yeah. So he brought us into this giant like wooden shed, which was just to the brim filled with like saws and blades and, you know, all these things and like just really weird wooden carvings and all this stuff. And, you know, it was pretty cool if you knew the person who did it. We're in the middle of nowhere and this guy was really weird. And we get in and like, you know, he's like rubbing a hand along these saws. And he's like, I'm not a serial killer. It's like, cool. You're definitely a serial killer. Yeah, you're definitely. This is. Yeah. If I had not been there, if I hadn't been like, let's go, we'd be dead. She'd be dead. Everyone would be yeah. dead. Your anyway. girlfriend would be turned into a birdhouse. I'm she, sure he grinds them down. And Oh, yeah. So, yeah, Jesus. Okay. If somebody wants you to do something, you're never beholden to do it. First off, no. even no. if it's a, a normal thing and not at all terrifyingly creepy like this is. Secondly, it's terrifyingly creepy. Every part of it. It was every, every bit of it is creepy individually and all together. It's, it's fucking awful. I love how he was also like, it's not a fetish. Everyone has their own particular taste. Yes, my man. That's a fetish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, fetishes are the things we all have, right? Just like fetishes don't have to be super weird, but this one, my dude, is super weird. Yeah. Also, like it's even even if this was, again, something normal, it's a fucked up thing to be throwing his exes in your face. Like none of this is nice, even again, discounting the fact that he sounds like a crazed murderer. I think you just got to get out of this relationship because this person clearly doesn't care about your life, (laughs) but also they don't care about you know, your wants and your desires and your input and your autonomy. Like they want you to do things their way or fuck it. You know, they're willing yeah. to disparage you and gaslight you and, you know, rub their exes in your face and, you know, detract from your enjoyment purely for their own. Uh, all of which are hallmarks of a terrible partner. Yeah. I mean, like right off the bat, what do we see? We see manipulation. We see gaslighting. We see, you know what I mean? Like abuse. the, the la- uh, Yeah. You know, verbal abuse, emotional abuse. The laundry list of red flags for this dude is you're 18. Yeah. You do not have to put up with this shit. I mean, no one has to put up with it, but like this, you're too young to think that this is the way shit goes down. Yeah. And thankfully she seems smart enough to be like, Hey, this is fucked. Also, I'm not doing this. Yeah. Um, it's like, I can't get out the, the, the phrase feels too alive. That's chilling. And Hey, let me tell you, I'm, I used to sleep with a woman who I literally had to tell to like cool it because she was, you know, too wiggly. Mm-hmm. She, she, <laughs> you know, she, she tried very hard to be an active participant at all times. And I had to be like, Hey, you got to calm down. You don't need to work as hard as you're working. Sometimes you can let, you know, let me do the work. And other times you get to do the work. Yeah. And then then you were like, look, I just don't like when women feel alive. 
Yeah, I, I look, all you're moving makes you it, very, very obvious that you're not dead. And two, when you move around, your heart beats faster. Mm-hmm. And that also implies that you're living. And I just, I can't deal with it. Oh, great. Now you're blushing. Now you're red because you're embarrassed. That, that You look less like a corpse than ever. Yeah, this, get out of this. This dude's also, garbage. Maybe call the FBI. I'm sure there's a healthy fetish community where this is a thing. Yeah. Okay. Like jokes aside, uh, like I think maybe this person is so volatile because maybe he's ashamed of what he likes because, you know, I get it. Like we're making jokes about off the bat here that it sounds really creepy. He probably understands that it sounds creepy and like hasn't come to terms with it yet because fuck it. If that's what you're into, that's fine. But it needs to be with someone who's also into that once nobody's getting harmed. Right. Or, or at least like. Like, there are better ways to introduce your fetish into the relationship. Because she could have been into it if he had approached it in a different way. Like, if he had been like, hey, I'm really into this and, like, introduce the concept of it. But to, like, to introduce it by being like, I don't, like, you need to do this. You know what I mean? It's, it's, like, regardless of what it was. Like, even if, like, it was doggy style. You know what I mean? Like, if he was, like... You need to be bent over. I can only fuck you bent over. You need to stop moving. Like, that sucks. A hundred percent. And like, I feel like even if they meant, even if they're not, you know, creepy, and if we just want to throw jokes aside, it's like this person clearly hasn't come to terms with their own fetish yet. Because one, they're denying it's a fetish. Two, they're not chill about it. They're trying to force you in. They're getting all defensive and aggressive when you talk about it. Uh, Like, you're making me feel like a weirdo. You're blah, blah, blah. Like, obviously, they feel weird about it, too. So I think this person really needs to, you know, learn to accept that part of himself and to like get more involved in fetish communities and know how to like healthily express these things. Um, But that doesn't take away from the fact that you don't need to put up with any of this and all the stuff that he's doing to you around this issue is wrong. Yeah, 100 percent. It's it's there's a lot of learning on his end that needs to be done. And it's not your responsibility to do it. You can on your way out kind of like tell him be like hey so 100 this is a fetish you don't need to be weird about it people have them that's fine but you need to learn how to deal with this healthy like in a healthy way in a respectful way in a mature way Mm -hmm. and i highly suggest you look up online how to do that because right now this isn't going to work great that your exes played along with it but i'm not going to and the way you dealt with it is ensuring that i'm not even going to be with you anymore Mm -hmm. So you need to learn how to deal with this. And like he can choose to learn it or not, but it's not your problem anymore. And like if for some reason he's listening right now, take that advice. Learn how to deal with your fetish. If anyone here has a fetish that they maybe mishandle, like, you know, don't be ashamed of it. Again, once you're not hurting anybody and once the people engaging it with you are, you know, complicit and giving consent and again, also not being hurt, you know, unless they want to be. And just make sure you're doing these things healthy because there's nothing wrong with the fetishes once the parties are, you know, cool with it. All right, shall we move into Tinders? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, at the end of the episode, we like to peruse online dating to find profiles that either glow or not glow, the opposite of glow, dim. Maybe they glow or maybe they're just no. Yeah, we comb them for red flags and we give you our thoughts on them in an effort to entertain you and hopefully improve your online dating game. This is Katya. It's pronounced Katya. I know you will still message me and ask about it, lol. I can, but don't really like to lead a conversation. Hope you like to be in charge, dot, dot, dot. Thanks for clarifying your name. Is it a weird name? Like, is it spelled strange? Uh, It's spelled K-A-T backwards R. Uh, Okay, so it's like Russian, I guess? Yeah, yeah. Like Ukrainian or something? Mm -hmm, Yeah. That's fine. Cool. I don't know. I, I don't have a problem with you being like, or her being like, you know, you'll probably talk about it anyway. Cause like, it's a, like, I probably would too. You know what I mean? The not liking to lead a conversation. That's a red flag for me. Makes me nervous because that probably means that you don't put in any effort in. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe a one letter response, like a K, maybe a lol. No big deal. Like a lot of like NBDs, a lot of acronyms. How was your day? Good. Yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. You. Yeah. Maybe um, not even the you just good. Maybe not. The, like, hope you like being in charge, dot, 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 makes me think that there's a little bit of sexual playfulness there. Maybe. You know what I mean? But I also, considering it's, it, like, it's still part of the same sentence, so it just sounds like, hope you like to talk to a blank screen. Like, if you want to be sexually playful, that line opens you up for a lot of creepy shit. 
Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's a real good jumping off point for not the best responses. Yeah. One second later, you're getting a whole bunch of folded over duvets. So I'm going to be saying this is a three for me. Yeah, it's it's pretty boring. The name thing's fine. Hope you like to be in charge. Sure. But like, I don't like to lead the conversation. Like, it, it's boring at best and then shitty at worst right there. So yeah, three. This is Robin. Leather worker, bartender, projects guy, and overbearing cat mom who prefers grit over grace, seeks lovers and pals open to all kinds of transparent and honest connections. I like my park walks foggy, my bike rides moonlit, and my soundtracks do me. Would love your podcast, Recos, but can guarantee that birds will distract me. I love it. Right? Yeah. I was going through it. I I get who he is. Uh, He likes podcasts. Can you you recommend us? Sorry, it's a lady. Oh, I don't know why. What's their name? Robin. Oh, I thought I heard Robert. Um, Even better. I actually like it more now. It's fucking cool. Personally, for me, I like the idea that she's open to all kinds of transparent and honest connections. Like that, like if I were ever to go back on Tinder, like if a man and I decide to open up, that would be like, that would be my people. I'd be looking for those people. And that would be like what I would put out there. Mm-hmm. So this, this profile, like I'm giving it a 10 across the board. It gives you yeah. everything. I think so. It's got personality. Uh, they seem genuine. They seem fun. They seem interesting. Yeah. I have, I have no qualms here. It's a 10. Yeah. But also you should match them and send them our podcast. I just try to. Hell yeah. And now I have our people wanting to meet instantly and having no patience can swipe left in the world of instant messaging. She is a four-page love letter. Heart. Uh, This goes against everything I think online dating should be. Online dating should be spur of the moment, spontaneous. It should be, you know, you match with someone. It's like, let's meet for drinks tonight. Like, why not? Why would I fucking waste my time talking about things we could be talking about in person and actually connect? I also feel like if you feel this strongly about it, it's not even like, I don't want to meet you that day. It's like, you know, within a week, I'm sure is also still going to be too soon my big red flag here is the she's a four-page love letter like you you have a woman in mind and you are going to try to oh no this is a girl oh sorry oh she describing herself i assume so oh either way i guess you could also be looking for yeah for ladies as well it was not a lady who swiped her when they sent it to us fair enough I, i assume she's talking about herself and Not going to lie, I don't love either of those because like it doesn't tell you shit about them apart from that they're a little bit pretentious maybe and also want you to put in a lot of work. Even even being like, I'm a four page love letter, I'm not an instant message. It's like, okay, cool. I have to grind to get to know you maybe. And the other thing, it's like, if you have no pace you want to meet, that's not what online dating is to me. You know what I mean? Cool that you you want to, like, I I appreciate that you you let people know up front but at the same time i know absolutely nothing about you it's it's like a two for me i'm gonna give it a five because it's like meh like it it doesn't really offend me uh now that i know it's not a guy looking for a four-page love letter um i would have given a lot less for the yeah it's just it's just nothing for me so i'm just gonna give it a five i think a five is generous it probably is okay Well, that's all the tinders I got. Thank you very much for listening. It has been a pleasure to record this podcast for you on this fine evening. It's been beautiful and we love you. We appreciate you spending your hour with us. It means the world to us. We know uh, the days are short and for you to give us a little sliver of your time is is very, very kind of you and we love you for it. Yeah, we were top 12 in the uh, Indian sexuality uh, Apple podcast chart. So welcome, India. How's it going? If you have a question you'd like to reach out and get your question on the podcast, we will talk about anything. We'll answer any of your questions as as best we can. Um, So don't be shy. Don't hesitate. We will keep you anonymous. All you have to do is head over to fbuddiespodcast.com and head over to the contact page. You can assign yourself an agent name, which is what we will refer to you as to keep your identity secret. And fill us out a question, and we will answer it as soon as we can. Thank you to Josh Eagle and the Harvest Cities for his song, Paper Stars. You got some bad sex writing for us? You know it. This is actually from uh, the D&D like, monster book. Ooh. Driders are sex- sexually dimorphic. A female drider's lower spider body is sleek and graceful, often similar to a black widow's, while its upper drow torso retains alluring curves and a beautiful face, with the exception of sharp poisonous fangs. A male drider's lower body is bulky like a tarantula, and its upper body is wiry and bears a hideous face, more spider than drow, complete with fanged mandibles. Hell yeah. <laughs> Those spider girls are sexy. Spider men, though. Nope. Not so much. Yeah. Hideous, hideous face. They don't have sleek backs. 
Sorry, ladies who are into Spider-Man. <laughs> You're stuck with the Uggos. You already have a sexy Spider-Man. Tom Holland's good enough for you. Damn it. <laughs> to be fair, he does have a sleek back. He does. His back is sleek as hell. I tell him that every Instagram post he ever makes, they just say, hey, Tom, that back looking sleek. <laughs> I'm going to tweet that to him right now. I'm going to do it, too. Uh, my name is Dane Miller. And I'm now Spain. We've been your fuck buddies. <laughs> <laughs>